Hello everyone. Uh, uh, I'll be uh, giving a talk about processing images uh, in scale. So it's not a very uh, um, of of chosen path in Go because most of the Go uh, projects, if you see right, so they are most basically in building servers, building real time system, concurrent systems. But um, uh, this uh, in my talk, I would like to touch upon this uh, part also. So uh, different image processing libraries that are available processing 2D images. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, so different image processing libraries processing for 2D images um, that are available. Uh, so image processing. So this has been taken from Wikipedia. So it's um, uh, it's a it's a process uh, where the input is an image. You process it and then uh, and you do some processing on the image and you give an image as an output or give a set of features or um, uh, or a set of parameters related to the image as an output, and there are a lot of uh, image processing techniques that you can do. Like uh, segments, there some of them are very uh, popular, like uh, face detection or uh, feature, some kind of feature detection, age detection, or uh, some extraction, uh, noise reduction, scaling, stitching, and all these things. Yeah. Uh, so uh, th uh, these are some of the Go available Go libraries that I found uh, when I was looking uh, through the internet, and. Um, the, uh, I'll, I'll go uh, go through them uh, one by one. So uh, the first one is the standard library Go Image, and um, it implements a, a standard 2D image library. So you uh, you can uh, have, uh, give input uh, a PNG or JPG or uh, a GIF uh, as uh, an image format, and you can uh, you can process that. And also it has a, a sub project inside Image that is Image slash Color which uh, has a basic color library for playing with RGB uh, color uh, palettes and all. And on, there is one sub, sub uh, uh, pro, uh, project inside image color, that is image color palette, which gives you uh, two set of uh, uh, color palettes. So one is plan nine and another is uh, web safe color palettes. So th these are very limited, but yeah, those are available as part of uh, standard library. Uh, second one is uh, uh, image magic bindings. So image magic has a lot of, lot of good functions for uh, processing. So um, they are basically available as C API. So they are the most bindings are through Cgo, and um, it has uh, it has implemented um, um, almost all the uh, image uh, image magic methods that are available for uh, image resizing, grayscaling, uh, tiling, rotationing, um, some text effects, and all these things. Yeah. Uh, third one is uh, the it's a big one. So it's uh, OpenCV support in C. So OpenCV is uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the most popularly used uh, uh, image processing library, and um, so Go, Go has some bindings for OpenCV. So the uh, the one I was looking at from the GoBot team, so they have implemented some um, binding from the C APIs. So with those APIs, what you can do is you can access. Uh, so if you have a webcam or your camera, you can access a camera from your Go program. Uh, you can hook up your uh, some uh, security camera or a webcam or um, any kind of uh, a camera that is accessible through internet, and you can access frames, and you can uh, uh, capture frames, uh, capture a set of frames as a video, and um, also run uh, face detection and um, um, all these things on it. And there is one more repository that also implements OpenCV in Go. That is uh, that that's by this developer. So uh, there you have uh, more uh, methods available um, along with the one that is available in uh, this uh, GoBot package. So there you can uh, do some kind of uh, edge detection, uh, can edge detection. You can do some cropping. You can do some image resizing. Yeah, uh, those things are available. Uh, next uh, uh, library is Imaging Library, uh, which is a uh, basic image manipulation. It depends on the uh, standard image library, but also the the goal of the library is to extend uh, what's available as part of the standard library. So it, it can do image and uh, basic image uh, encoding and decoding, cropping, and um, also uh, different manipulation like uh, flipping the images, stitching two, two or multiple images together, uh, blurring, sharpening, and resizing, transforming, and all this stuff. Uh, and this uh, for image resizing, there is one. Uh, this is a very popular image uh, resizing library. Um, and it's written in pure Go. And um, also, uh, apart from uh, uh, providing support for resizing images, it also, it's, it also has a support for um, creating thumbnails, which provides a, uh, preserves the aspect ratio of the image. And um, it has common interpolation methods, nearest neighbor, bilinear. So uh, the most popular one that's being used, that I personally use, is bilinear image resizing. Uh, yeah, 
that's mostly about it. And also, if you if you're interested in playing with different color spaces, uh, different uh, transforming colors from uh, one space to another space, uh, there is one uh, library called Go Colorful, and um, uh, it's uh, it basically stores color in RGB format, um, and also it has support for other uh, this uh, hue saturation value format, also hex RGB, linear RGB, and all this. Um, uh, color spaces are supported by this library, uh, and um, also, it has a bunch of uh, other methods for generating random colors or creating a color palette based on a, uh, a certain color space and all these things. Yeah. So uh, I work in a company called DataWeave. So DataWeave uh, deals with mostly providing um, uh, pricing-related intelligence to e-commerce customers. So to do that, we have to crawl a lot of web pages every day from in, uh, from the internet. And uh, most of the uh, most of our focus crawlers will uh, grab the web page and will do some uh, processing on it and uh, um, will uh, provide some insights and analytics and that that goes directly into our interface. But one uh, uh, use uh, one more feature we want to add is uh, also to use the image or the thumbnail that we receive from the this e-commerce websites. And um, to after grabbing the uh, the images, we want we want to extract the dominant colors from the images. So what do we mean by the dominant colors? kind of uh, images you will see from the e-commerce websites so uh, if we we for this project we are mainly looking at the uh, different apparels and uh, so on the top you will see that uh, these are the dominant colors uh, which are which you can uh, retrieve from the image and um, most of the dominant colors are uh, re uh, retrieved as a uh, hex then we convert it into different uh, color space and we name the colors so which is uh, this one is really orange what shade of orange and all these things that's that's a post processing we do after we have grabbed the image um, so also we do a lot of uh, insights based on these colors so what we do is so let's say for uh, a particular store we can show the entire uh, color distribution of apparels they have uh, on store one and we can uh, we can do a, go a, a one level down and we can show that let's say we are looking at the pink uh, pink tops for uh, women and we can show the color distribution for the particular store and also we can do a lot generate a lot of time series data for the particular store let's say we are dealing with uh, for example amazon uh, so we uh, we want to show that uh, since last year, uh, uh, what are the color uh, Amazon has been promoting in their website, and uh, are the different color combinations? So whether they're promoting more, more uh, red with black product or blue as uh, some some green product. So we can show all this uh, data and all. Yeah. Also, uh, one more uh, use case is uh, clustering similar products. So we have a, uh, some product in one website and the, another product in another website. How do you know that both are similar? So we uh, we have a clustering engine, and we uh, whatever the uh, color uh, histogram we get from an image, right? We plug it into the directly into the clustering engine, and uh, it tells us uh, what are the similar images across different stores. So uh, these are some of the numbers. So we crawl around 15 million web pages uh, every day uh, throughout the world, and uh, uh, almost 40% of those uh, products that we crawl are apparels and uh, lifestyle products that we are focusing on currently here. And 30% of the products are actually new introduced products, and the rest of them are uh, re getting repeated every day and every day. So, uh, for, uh, mm, so uh, if we're looking at around um, almost 2 million Im uh, images, we, we have to process every day. Uh, so th that was the starting point. And we have uh, two servers, uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, takes care of, uh, deals with all these things. Uh, so these are the uh, this is the existing architecture we had in Python since uh, we uh, we are a Python shop uh, we uh, the where the current uh, architecture was written in Python so we, this was ex, uh, exposed as a service so the API was written with uh, Cherry Pie and Unicorn so um, and for decoding resizing processing uh, we are we are now using uh, OpenCV and NumPy. But uh, previously, we were using Python image library PIL. And after the images uh, are processed, um, uh, we, we use some uh, library called, uh, we actually, we take in the library web colors, and we actually extended them on our own. And we use that to map different, uh, the hex values to uh, different colors. And also, we, uh, we have a, a MongoDB replica set throughout a service. So this gets, uh, gets cached. So whenever a uh, same image comes in, let's say, seven days later, we don't process the image again. We just uh, generate the histogram. Uh, uh, I mean, from the cache itself, and we send the response back. But there are some problems with it. So we were facing some problems. The the main problems were uh, high system usage because image processing it's 
terribly CPU extensive process, uh, CPU intensive process. It it takes uh, it actually consumes in the entire CPU if you if you are doing uh, processing a lot of images. So, uh, but unfortunately, our servers since we are startup, we can't afford a uh, hundred servers for a different process. So, our, uh, my, the servers I was using were already uh, was also shared with other services. Uh, we had Celery, uh, we had RabbitMQ, the other, other and some other processes and all. And um, for, since we were uh, using Junicorn here, so we were spawning a uh, four uh, worker for this um, our application. And when we are uh, we observed right when uh, when we are running this, uh, the CPU uh, actually goes beyond 100 percent. So this was kind of concern. We were getting uh, I mean notified by our sysadmins that uh, the server is going to crash anytime. And also uh, the uh, the memory also. Uh, goes over the the normal memory that sh should have been consumed, uh, and it takes care, I mean uh, takes up the entire ma memory at at certain points. So this at this point we wanted to look at some other alternatives. So um, uh, I, I I I suggested that we let's do this in Go, and um, uh, so. So this is the stack after we replace it with Go. So we didn't use any fancy, uh, uh, I mean, uh, this web frameworks and all. We use plain net HTTP with MUX, and for uh, exposing this as an API, and for uh, decoding the image, we used a standard image library again. Uh, uh, this uh, image library, and we uh, I used this uh, NFNT uh, resize library. Um, uh, that, that's pretty good because it worked out pretty well for us. And also for processing, we are again using a standard library, so that's that's one of the advantages. And one problem we had is mapping the images because uh, in Python, if you remember, right? So we were using something called Web Colors Library. So it's it's a pretty big library which has a lot of functions and all. But we didn't have something in Go. So what to do now? So I thought that let's uh, rewrite this library in Go. So I it took a couple of days and uh, uh, about a week to test and all. So we finally re uh, rewrote this library in Go, open source in GitHub, and. Um, for uh, for caching, right? We didn't have to worry much because uh, MongoDB has a has an excellent uh, library for uh, for Go. That's uh, pronounced as Mango, I guess. Uh, and we were sending the responses back. Yeah. So, uh, what are the advantages uh, we uh, we saw uh, while we we deployed this in Go? So we we immediately we saw that the API is now able to serve more requests at, at a given point because um, it was pretty painful to spawn uh, a worker thread every time you want concurrency in Python. So because we were using Junicon with four worker threads, it, it was actually a, a pretty heavy on, the, on our servers. And uh, we, we set the um, Gomez prox, uh, um, this environment variable to four. We didn't extend it. So because we thought that that was, that was kind of a stable situation for us. And uh, the system uh, usage never exceeded uh, 50 or 60%. So that, that's uh, also. Um, the one good thing about Go is binaries. So we, you pack up into a binary and you deploy to multiple servers. Uh, that was also uh, an advantage we, advantage we faced. And also because we didn't introduce a lot of uh, external libraries into our system, uh, also not um, not a lot of exter external packages. We mostly dependent on the standard library uh, standard packages. So one the, we used uh, the resize library, Mongo library, and the library we wrote. That's it. Uh, the most, uh, the rest of the stuff are uh, kind of dependent on stand standard libraries, but um, still uh, there is a lot of uh, scope for improvement here because uh, Go lacks a, a, new, uh, a, a standard numerical computing package. So someone asked this in the last uh, panel session that why don't you have something like NumPy in Go? So uh, NumPy is uh, uh, it's a pre pretty much a standard numerical computing package, but uh, Go is still more evolving. The people are uh, building more stuff for um, mathematical computation, matrix manipulation, and so on, all those things. And um, not that many image processing libraries and computer vision related works because uh, what I've seen that people will start a project, they'll get excited about something, and uh, then what you see is that most of uh, projects are abundant because when you go, then you've seen the last commit was made around a year back, one and a half years back, so it's not really supported anymore. Um, also, uh, OpenCV would be a, a support would be a good option, but uh, there are not a, not, a, not many libraries available with the C API. Most of the important uh, stuffs that has been uh, been done in computer vision and all, so they are mostly in C plus plus. 
So if you want to hook that into C, you, you need something like swig and all, uh, that's, that's kind of uh, painful uh, because it's not a native, it's like C go. And also uh, there are, because uh, uh, this kind of work is not really being done by a lot of people, so uh, getting support from the internet was uh, pretty hard, I, um, but there were pretty wonderful people in the IRC channel, uh, they helped me a lot with a lot of things. Uh, but um, since uh, this is the first go for con, so I would say that we need more, more people playing and experimenting, more companies coming up and telling us their use cases, more meetups like this. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's it. Thank you very much.